from Japan. Welcome to Medical Frontiers. We're actually in Skiji, which is home to one of the world's largest fish markets. And as you can see, it's packed with tourists that have come to visit, and they sell the freshest seafood. As you can see, there's a huge amount of shellfish, which is for sale, and obviously everything in the tank is completely live. And for example, this here is abalone, and abalone is a delicacy in Japan, and it's eaten, it's eaten raw. I think you'll probably find this really unique. This is actually the liver, this white spongy thing is actually the liver of the monkfish. It's called a kind of like the foie gras of the sea. Seeing all of this really provides a sense of the richness of Japanese cuisine with seafood at the center. Seafood is full of nutrients for maintaining really good health. And Japan is one of the leaders in researching these nutrients. These are some of the food scientists are focusing on. Salmon, salmon roe crab. They all have something in common. Their reddish color comes from the pigment called astaxanthin. Today, we'll take a closer look at astaxanthin and how it can help support good health. Japan is a world leader in cutting-edge medical technology and healthcare services. Join us as we explore Medical Frontiers. Astaxanthin has shown promise for patients with severe heart problems. And some doctors are now using it to prevent liver conditions. Seafood is especially rich in astaxanthin. We'll show you some delicious ways to enjoy it. These days, supplements containing astaxanthin are widely available and it's been shown to prevent weakening of the muscles and organs. Scientists also say it can aid recovery from illness and fight aging. In Japan, medical facilities are also actively starting to use them. Salmon live for about four years. During that time, they swim about 20,000 kilometers. In the end, they migrate up rivers to spawn. Scientists believe one reason for their physical power is that they're full of astaxanthin. Japanese researchers are studying the health benefits of the pigment. A team at Kyoto Prefectural University of Medicine has performed more than a decade of experiments designed to prove its benefits. Their experiments on mice have shown a link between astaxanthin and physical fitness. They fed the mice on the right food containing astaxanthin for four weeks. Those on the left did not eat it. Then mice from each group were placed in an exercise box. Initially, there weren't any obvious differences, but gradually, the mice that didn't consume astaxanthin began to trail behind. The researchers repeated the experiment and tracked how many minutes the mice were able to run. Those that consumed astaxanthin ran 17 minutes longer on average than those that didn't. The researchers took a closer look to pinpoint why. They dyed tissue from the heart and calf muscles with a special reagent. Samples from the mice that did not eat astaxanthin contain many dark spots. They indicate areas of inflammation. Muscle inflammation can cause fatigue. That explains why the mice fell behind. What's more, inflammation is caused by a potentially harmful substance called reactive oxygen species. When the mice engage in strenuous exercise, mitochondria and other cellular components in both skeletal and heart muscles 
start producing excessive amounts of reactive oxygen species. This substance oxidizes things like DNA, protein, fat, and cells, and causes the dark spots to occur. The mice that consumed astaxanthin didn't have much inflammation. The researchers thought there must be a connection between them. When living creatures breathe, they inhale oxygen, which gets carried to cells. Mitochondria then use the oxygen to generate energy. A byproduct of this process is reactive oxygen species, or ROS. ROS fights viruses and bacteria, but when there's too much, proteins and fat inside mitochondria become oxidized, weakening their ability to produce energy. This is called oxidative stress. Too much oxidative stress can cause serious problems. For instance, the muscles that help the eye to focus grow weak, diminishing sight. Oxidative stress may also compromise cardiac functions, leading to heart failure. The researchers looked for changes in the cells of mice that were fed astaxanthin and those that weren't to help confirm how it works. They focused on proteins inside mitochondria that play an important role in generating energy. They also compared mice after exercise and measured the degree of protein oxidation. They found that the mice that ate astaxanthin had 40% less oxidation than those that didn't. The results suggest that astaxanthin helps to eliminate excess reactive oxygen species. Simply put, astaxanthin protects cells throughout the body from oxidative stress. They also prevent damage caused by ROS, so people don't get sick. They are a form of preventive medicine. I bet more and more scientists around the world will be focusing on astaxanthin in the future. A Japanese company developed a technology to mass-produce astaxanthin supplements. Medical professionals are now using them to treat patients. This is a leading heart hospital near Tokyo. It provides advanced care for hard-to-treat conditions. Doctors here began giving patients astaxanthin supplements five years ago. Mitochondria create energy so the heart can keep functioning. But the process also generates reactive oxygen species. The harder the heart beats, the more this byproduct is created. That harms mitochondria and keeps them from producing enough energy. It's like the heart runs out of fuel and is one cause of cardiac failure. Astaxanthin can ease oxidative stress to keep the heart from getting rusty, so to speak, and that can help people stay healthy for a long time. Yuji Fukuda has been receiving treatment for dilated cardiomyopathy. The condition affects the heart muscle, and there is no cure. This is Fukuda's heart in 2011, when he first started coming to the hospital. Compared to a normal heart, Fukuda's is larger. The muscles are stretched and slack, and the contractions are weak. Western medicines can prevent problems like these from getting worse, but can't fix them. At first, Fukuda took medicines to help his heart function. But his condition grew worse, 
and everyday life started to become difficult. Walking was hard enough. There were stairs outside the office where I used to work, but I couldn't get to my floor without taking breaks. I'd run out of breath, rest a little, and then start climbing again. Then, Fukuda's doctor gave him a supplement containing astaxanthin. He took 12 milligrams a day along with medications. This is how his heart looked after taking astaxanthin for two years. The muscles have tightened and the heart has become smaller. The contractions are stronger, allowing the heart to pump out more blood. Fukuda can now walk without stopping to catch his breath. He no longer has difficulty climbing stairs either. And although he had given up golf because of his heart condition, he's now playing it again. It's great. I can enjoy golfing again. I could tell I was getting my strength back, becoming healthier like I used to be. I'm really amazed. The hospital has also used astaxanthin to treat about 50 patients who suffered heart attacks or cardiac failure. Most showed signs of improvement with the supplement. Before, some of those patients would have required a heart transplant or an artificial heart. Now, with astaxanthin, even they can regain their health and resume a normal life. Not too long ago, that was unthinkable. I believe astaxanthin could potentially lead to revolutionary developments for a variety of conditions in the future. Doctors are also using astaxanthin to treat liver diseases that are difficult to cure. Tsuguhito Ota at Kanazawa University has been conducting clinical trials. He believes astaxanthin can help restore liver function. The participants have a condition called fatty liver. It's caused when the liver accumulates an excess buildup of fat. Problems occur when reactive oxygen species cause the fat to oxidize, triggering inflammation. Over time, the liver tissue can harden, leading to cirrhosis or even cancer. In the past, the condition mainly affected heavy drinkers. But now, more non-drinkers who regularly eat high-calorie foods are also getting fatty liver. Oxidative stress plays a key role in the progression from fatty liver to serious liver disease. Astaxanthin is a strong antioxidant, so I thought it would be an effective treatment. Ota had 40 people with fatty liver take 12 milligrams of astaxanthin every day for six months. Hideki Azuma was one of them. He struggled with fatty liver for 20 years. Here's a microscopic image of Azuma's liver tissue before he started taking astaxanthin. The white round spots are fat. The dense purple matter is tissue that has hardened due to inflammation. That happens when reactive oxygen species oxidize the fat. Look at this. It's all hardened tissue. Your condition is bordering on cirrhosis. You can see lots of it. The image on the left is from before the trial. 
The one on the right was taken after Asma took astaxanthin for six months. Many of the white spots are gone, and so is much of the inflammation. I'm happy with the result. It seems the supplements worked. We've confirmed that astaxanthin is also effective at onset, when a normal liver starts becoming fatty. Using substances like this that are in the food we eat and also prevent illness would make low-cost health care possible. Toshikazu Yoshikawa is a global authority on reactive oxygen species and one of Japan's leading astaxanthin researchers. Dr. Yoshikawa-san, thank you so much for your time today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, obviously our modern lifestyle will promote the creation of these, these free radicals, I guess through diet, through lifestyle, perhaps through over-exercising. Um, and what, what is it about our modern lifestyle that really creates these, these reactive oxygen species or these free radicals? Nowadays, stress, whether mental or physical, is a major cause of reactive oxygen species. But there are other factors too, such as air polluting particles called PM2.5 and cigarette smoke. Things we eat also contain reactive oxygen species. In addition, ultraviolet rays are getting stronger as the ozone layer is depleted and we're constantly exposed to radiation from space. Environmental causes are another major concern. In terms of axisthenin, what is it, what illnesses or, for example, what symptoms is it really effective against? And what are the, some of the ways that it can be used in modern, modern medicine? When astaxanthin is absorbed and reaches cells throughout our bodies, it reduces some of the damage caused by aging. I'm especially interested in astaxanthin's effects on arterial sclerosis. Just preventing hardening of the arteries would help prevent dementia. It's important to help people stay healthy for a long time, instead of simply extending their lives. I believe astaxanthin research will be globally recognized as a cutting-edge field of study and as a rapidly aging nation, Japan should play a leading role. So how much, um, doctor, do you recommend that, that somebody takes a day? And in terms of milligrams of, of astaxanthin, how much should you be taking a day? The usual dose in our clinical trials is about 12 milligrams per day. But some say six milligrams is enough. So somewhere in that range is considered an appropriate amount for preventing various illnesses. But you can obtain only so much of the nutrient from food. If you want to get astaxanthin from, say, the red flesh of salmon, you need to eat at least three fillets every day. To get the illness preventing benefits regularly, it's a good idea to take astaxanthin supplements too. And Dr. Yoskawa, there's so many different supplements which are available on the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we know they're safe and, and what should we be looking for in a, in a supplement? Are there any side effects with taking astaxanthin? There haven't been any reports of side effects, definitely not for the amounts I just mentioned. I think we can say that astaxanthin is a comparatively safe substance, but we can't say it's 100% safe for everyone, so I encourage people to be well informed. And if you do take astaxanthin and notice any problems or unusual symptoms, it's best to stop taking it right away. Dr. Yoshikawa, thank you so much for your time today. Arigatou gozaimashita.
It's no secret that the Japanese had the highest life expectancy in the world. Even so, the period during which most people can live independently without care is a full 10 years short of the average lifespan. Medical expert has been searching for ways to slow aging and fight illness so people can continue to enjoy healthy lives. It'll be interesting to see what else Japanese researches into the benefits of seafood reveals. Eating seafood is an effective and delicious way to add astaxanthin to your diet. We visited Tokyo's Tsukiji Fish Market to sample some of the options. Our guide was Kazunaga Yazawa, whose research focuses on nutrients in seafood. Salmon is one of the best sources of astaxanthin. This helpful substance is found in other items too. I bet you know what this is. This is salmon roe, isn't it? Salmon roe, which is basically the eggs of the salmon, and they've laid after they've gone up the river. Salmon travel upstream to spawn. The females transfer all the astaxanthin in their bodies to their eggs, then they turn completely white and die. So it's really like a natural capsule of EPA, DHA, and astaxanthin. So I think we should all be starting to eat far more salmon roe. Here is some shrimp. They also have a lot of astaxanthin. As you can see, they look rather dark. Even though astaxanthin is red, it seems strange, doesn't it? But if you fry or stew these shrimp, they'll turn bright red. All the products here are dried seafood. Do you see anything red? Exactly. For example, a small prawn. These are called sakura shrimp because the pink color is like sakura or cherry blossoms. You eat these shrimp whole without peeling them. Actually, astaxanthin is concentrated in shrimp and crab shells. So eating whole shrimp is a good way to get astaxanthin. What actually is this? <laughs> this is salmon that's been sliced and dried. In Japanese, it's called salmon toba. It keeps because it's dried. And it's nice and red, too. Please, sample some. Mm. It's actually really nice. Mm. It's actually really good. So it's really a concentrated right. source of the salmon. Everything else, how would they eat this in Japan? As a snack? You munch on this while drinking sake. It makes it taste more delicious, and you get nutrients at the same time. Next, let's look at ways to add astaxanthin to your daily diet. I've had some dishes prepared that are rich in the nutrient. In Japan, dishes like this are called seafood bowls. They consist of fresh seafood ingredients over rice. First, we've got salmon roe, which is a popular topping. Below that are slices of raw salmon sashimi. They have a delicious pink color. And finally, there's crab. The reddish flecks in the meat are astaxanthin. It's delicious. Absolutely delicious. The best way to enjoy seafood containing astaxanthin is to eat it raw. That allows you to absorb 100% of this beneficial nutrient. I mean, it's a great idea to have it all, I mean, as a seafood bowl altogether. Mm. It's probably a really good balance also, of not just, of course, as I've said, thin, but also protein, yes. carbohydrates. Yes. How about this? This is rice with salmon. That's right. Before steaming the rice, the chef added a piece of raw salmon. That's how this was made. This method ensures that the flavor of the salmon and the astaxanthin both get absorbed into the rice as it cooks. Mm. 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 Mm.
What a really nice colour. Texture is quite different, yes. but the flavour, it gives an amazing flavour just to the rice. Because usually what happens is exactly if you mix it at the last minute, but if you cook it together with the rice, the rice is all flavoured, it's delicious. Mm. You can also use canned salmon to make this. When you open the can, you might see some reddish oil on the surface. Kind of, it's almost like a red liquid. That's actually astaxanthin. So you don't want to throw that away. Eating both the flesh and juice is an efficient way of getting astaxanthin. Yazawa also recommends salads of brightly colored vegetables, like tomatoes and peppers, topped with sakura shrimp. The bodies of the shrimp contain astaxanthin, and the eyes are actually lumps of the nutrient. In addition, the tomatoes are red because of lycopene, and the yellow pepper contains beta-carotene. These pigments are antioxidants, just like astaxanthin. They all have the same effect of preventing oxidative stress. And then you've got obviously all the different nutrients, the different antioxidants, which I would imagine has a synergistic effect. Yes, right. It's absolutely delicious, and there's so many different textures and flavors. Yes. And it gives it a really nice crunch. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's a really nice crunch. You can also sprinkle some sakura shrimp on pasta or eat it as is, like a snack. Enjoy it however you like. Colors are just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so I think gorgeous, it's, um, and I think this also, it's just so well balanced as well. Mm -hmm. And delicious. Yes. And delicious. And delicious. Yes. Thank you so much for your time. Seafood is an important part of Japan's traditional diet and it's beneficial for both health and beauty. But unfortunately, Japanese people are consuming less seafood these days. In my work as a nutritional consultant, I recommend eating fish about three to four times a week. In addition to asistanthin, seafood is rich in the omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA, as well as protein and many other nutrients. Simply taking supplements doesn't guarantee good health. It really is the food we eat every single day that's the most important. And I think one of the great secrets to Japan's incredible longevity is the amount of wide variety of seafood that's eaten every single day. Science View. Each episode of Science View focuses on the latest in Japanese science, technology, and manufacturing, from biology and medicine to geology and space exploration. Join NHK World on Facebook. Visit our homepage and give us your like. You can get daily recommendations of NHK World TV programs with quality pictures and videos. All users' comments are read, and some of them are cited on Viewer's Choice, a slot that reruns our viewers' favorite programs every Sunday. So, check out our official NHK World Facebook account right now. NHK World TV from Japan.